Welcome to our worship service here at Abiding Love Lutheran Church. Especially want to welcome our guests worshiping with us this morning. Uh, I probably sound a whole lot better, don't I? Like clear. Uh, we're thankful the new AV and sound system has been put in. And so, um, as Jeff told me, it is a really good system. It just um, cannot overcome operator error. I don't know what he meant by that. But, um, so, but thankful for, for that, that gift and, and, and your um, generosity towards helping making that happen. Um, today we continue with a, a, a time of the church here called the end times as we focus on what's going to happen at the end of time. And today um, we look at the last judgment. And so we want to ask our God to help us remember the last judgment. And, and we want to see uh, as we look at that, what does that mean for us today? So that thought's going to be carried throughout our, our worship service. Um, today, we also, um, as we celebrate in a, as a country Veterans Day this week, we're also going to use this opportunity um, to remember our veterans um, and also our, um, um, you'll see the wording talking about our warfare that we have spiritually uh, as well. And so see that carried out. I invite you to begin on page, or to turn to page three as we come to the presence of our God. In the name of the Father, who orders legions of angels to protect us from evil. In the name of the Son, whose victory in the battle of Calvary won our peace. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, who equips us with armor for spiritual battle. The battle is the Lord's. With him we gain the victory. Alleluia. Amen. We come before the judge of all armies and nations to confess our sins. Almighty God, the Lord of hosts, we fall humbly before your majesty. We have so often foolishly taken up arms against you, challenging your authority and resisting your will. We raise the right and confess our shameful guilt. Do not treat us as our sins deserve, but for the sake of Jesus, the conquering King, Grant us a full pardon. Make us soldiers of the cross, eager to march into battle under your flag of victory. Christ has overcome all his enemies. When you were held prisoner by the devil, God set you free in Christ. He has forgiven all your sins, having canceled the written code of the law that stood against you. By the authority given in the gospel, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. And so we join in singing um, the hymn on page four. Day of wrath, O day of mourning.
The Holy Gospel is recorded for our learning in St. Matthew's Gospel in chapter 25, beginning at verse 31. Here Jesus teaches us that there's going to be a judgment day where he's going to separate people. And it's, and it's not a separation based on our works, but, but on our works that reflect the faith that we have. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat, I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They will also, also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Our second lesson is written in Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians in chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Here Paul um, lets us know about, um, since judgment day is coming, what does that mean for us as we live our lives then? Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We praise our God that we would know that day is surely coming and that he would help us to be prepared for it. We use the words of the of the hymn, The Day is Surely Drawing Near.
Grace, mercy, peace, and the righteous judgment of God are yours today. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, The portion of God's Word we're going to look at is from Daniel chapter 7. Um, Before we look at that, if you want, um, just turn to the cover, if you want. And as you look at that picture, it looks pretty amazing, isn't it? Um, we're going we're gonna to read uh, about that picture, okay, as it is a picture of, of God's judgment, all right? And I don't know if you see yourself in there, but you're there, okay? All right, now you can flip back to page 8. What does that picture look like? What, what does it mean? Well, um, Daniel chapter 7, verse 2. Daniel said, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me were the four winds of heaven churning up the great sea. Four great beasts, each different from the others, came up out of the sea. The first was like a lion, and it had the wings of an eagle. I watched until its wings were torn off. and It was lifted from the ground so that it stood on two feet like a man, and the heart of a man was given to it. And there before me was a second beast, which looked like a bear. It was raised up on one of its sides, and it had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. It was told, get up and eat your fill of flesh. And after that I looked, and there before me was another beast, one that looked like a leopard. And on its back it had four wings like those of a bird. This beast had four heads, and it was given authority to rule. After that, in my vision, uh, at night, I looked, and there before me was a fourth beast, terrifying and frightening and very powerful. It had a large iron teeth, and it crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. It was different from all the former beasts, and it had ten horns. While I was thinking about the horns, there before me was another horn, a, a little one, which came up among them. And three of the first horns were uprooted before it. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a man and a a mouth that spoke boastfully. So that gives you the picture, the background. And now we're going to focus on the next words from 9 and 10. As I looked, thrones were set in place. And the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. And the hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times, ten thousand stood before him, and the court was seated, and the books were opened. This is the word of our God. My dear friends in Christ, um, Dreams can seem so real, can't they? I don't know if you've had um, that experience where, where a dream was so real that you, you kind of maybe woke up and you saw yourself like moving arms and legs because of what you were doing in the dream. You were you know, almost acting it out um, while you were sleeping. Or, or maybe um, um, while you're dreaming, you um, saw something so, so scary that, that maybe you even sat up in bed or you... You actually cried out, ah! um, and, and because it was so real. In the Old Testament, uh, and, and even in the New Testament, God would, uh, at times would speak to his people um, using visions and dreams. And Daniel received one of those, and it was at night, and it was so real to him that as he saw it, 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 he tells us that he turned pale. It was so terrifying and frightening. It, it, the, the, what he saw were what, we've, what we read, right? He saw four beasts. And those four beasts were pictured four nations that, that were going to be in charge of the world from, from his time. So this is Daniel's time about about 553 B.C. right now when he's writing, to the time when the Messiah, when Jesus would come, that these kingdoms would be in charge um, during that time. 
And as he and and as we know now, we know who those four nations were. They were Babylon, they were the Medes and Persians, they were the the Greeks, and they were the Romans. And from Daniel's perspective, it looked like those governments, those beasts, were were the ones who were really in charge of the world. Um, and and um, but he noticed that that their time of their power would only last for a while, and then another government would come along, even more powerful than the, than the next one. But what was really frightening is that they would use that power um, and, it, and it would impact the church. It would impact God's people. They would use it to devour those who opposed them. And often um, that meant that, that God's people would be threatened and suffer be, at the hands of those scary, terrifying beasts that he saw. And then in the midst of the terror, um, God gives him a different picture. A picture of another kingdom. It was the kingdom of God and of the Messiah, his son, Jesus. And as he saw that, um, God wanted him to understand something about the end of time as he saw those things coming together. While that vision was, what would that be? 2,570 plus years ago, it, it might seem like, well, what God was trying to tell Daniel, the that was nice for Daniel, but what does that all mean for you and me? Um, I, I think as we look at these words, what God is teaching Daniel has as much to say to you and me today as it did to Daniel back then. As we look at the relationship between, between how God rules in his world using government and, and, and what he, the promise and peace and comfort that he has for his people. It's all right there for you and me. Why might that be important to us? Well, um, I don't know if you heard, but in our country last week, we had this special day called Election Day. And, it, and, and that day, um, well, at least or somewhere along that, the results of that day um, has brought what joy and celebration um, for some and even excitement about what might happen in the future. And for others, the results of that day may have brought sadness um, and, and may have even caused some to be scared about what's going to happen in the future. It is easy for us as we live in this world as God's people to be consumed by what we experience and especially in a, in a day like an election day. But what God wanted Daniel to understand and what he wants you and me to understand is that there's a, a way more important day that you and I should be focusing on than any day that happens in our country or in the world. And that day is judgment day. You see, the consequences of an election day, um, how long will that last? Maybe, maybe a few years, maybe a few more years. But the consequences of, of Judgment Day, that lasts for eternity. The joy and the celebration that are going to be on, on Judgment Day, that's, that's never going to end. And the suffering and the sadness of, of, of Judgment Day, that's never going to end either. And so as you and I, as God's church, live in this world, God wanted Daniel and he wanted you and me not to be terrified by what we see in the world, um, by, by the, the beasts, but instead he wanted us to focus on our God. And, and his vision of Judgment Day 
so that it might bring peace and comfort and certainty to God's people in the midst of it. And so God says to you and me today, it's no dream. The judge is coming. And as you and I focus on that vision of the judge, our God wants you and me to learn something. He wants you and me to learn who the judge is. And he wants you and me to learn how he's going to carry out that judgment. Let's take a look. Daniel um, tells us something, or God tells uh, uh, through, something through Daniel about this judge. What's the first thing? He says, as I looked, thrones were set in place. Um, it might have looked like the beasts were the ones who were in control of the world and doing whatever they wanted to do, but, but when God tells us here there were thrones set in place, there's someone that was over all of those beasts and that he was in charge. As, as Daniel looked and as you and I at times look, we can, it can look like government is just able to do whatever it wants to do. And it can use its power um, to, to, to devour and oppose God and, and his people and, and can make bring suffering to the life of God's people. And all of that can be true. But all of a sudden, in steps the judge into this picture, and it changes. Who's sitting on the throne? It's one called the Ancient of Days. That's an interesting name, isn't it? Um, the Ancient of Days. Now, what, is, what does that mean? What's that? Um, just for a moment, just, just try to imagine that it, it might be somebody's birthday, either you know, recently or in, in, in the upcoming weeks. And, and you go up to them on their birthday and you say to them, boy, you look ancient. Now, would you do that, okay? But I'm not planning to do that. But, but it's interesting that God says, I am the ancient of days, and he takes that as a compliment. Why? It tells us something about him. It tells us that he is the eternal God. He is the one who has been around from the very beginning, before any of those beasts that existed, those government powers, he was way before them. At the same time, it tells us that he is unchanging and permanent. You know, there are these beasts that come and they rule for a while and then they go away. They only last for a time. But not our God, not the one who is the ancient of days. He, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He sits on his throne and he's in charge all from the beginning to the end. And the beasts might, might think they can knock God off of his throne, but it will never happen. He sits on the throne and he sits there as judge. What else do we learn? Notice the difference in the characteristics and how the judge looks compared to the beasts. The judge isn't a beast. Instead, he has human characteristics. He has hair and a robe, but the color, that's what stands out to you and me. It's white. What does that tell us? Well, that tells us that this judge is holy and righteous. He is perfect. Earthly judges are, are, are to uphold law and order, aren't they? And yet, at times, judges can, can break the law themselves and at times may be unjust in how they carry out 
the law, but not this judge. Every judgment that he makes will always be perfect. He will never be unjust in any judgment he makes. What else do we see here? Well, notice the the throne he's sitting on, huh? His throne was flaming with fire and its wheels were all ablaze. It's like his throne was a chariot of fire almost. Fire. Fiery throne. You know, a a judge, I don't know if you've been in a courtroom or um, seen it on TV. A, A judge usually sits up high on a desk, right? Has that place of of, uh, position, of authority and power. And and so God's throne, the judge's throne, has that too, only it comes through fire. God often used fire as a picture for himself, uh, especially in the Old Testament, didn't he? Can you think of times where you see God as fire? You might say, well, Pastor, I remember when God would lead his people in the wilderness, there was a pillar of fire. Remember that? Oh, and I remember when, when God spoke to Moses. You remember how he did that? Through a burning bush, didn't he? And when God led his people to Mount Sinai, he came down in thunder and lightning and fire. I mean, it, it was a picture of God and it well, when you think of fire, what is that picture for you? Well, we just got to see fires close by, didn't we? And it reminds us how powerful fire is. Part of fire, then, also, is it displays the glory of God. Um, fire is one of those things that um, is inaccessible uh, you, you, you can't get close to it or you're not supposed to or you can't touch it because, because depending on how hot that fire is, it could, it could, could hurt you. It's the picture of the glory of the Lord. It's an interesting thing. He pictures the governments of the world as beasts. But when God sends his son and displays his kingdom, he doesn't come as a beast. Think of how he comes. He comes born of a virgin, humbly. And that's going to be important for you and me when it comes to God's judgment. Because that very king who came is also the one who will return at the end of time, won't he, to judge the living and the dead. And then he isn't going to come, Jesus says humbly, but he's going to come in all of that glory that he has, with all of the angels and the majesty that he has. Boy, you're going to know it, and you're going to see it. Oh, my friends, the judge is coming, and he's the one who's going to have the last word on everything. And that's what he shows us next. We know who is coming to judge. How is he going to carry out that judgment? Well, notice what happens. Um, I don't know if you noticed in the picture from the throne, but a river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Not just that his throne was out fire, but, but a river of fire was coming out from before his throne. Can you imagine a river of fire coming right at you? What would go through your mind? You see, he he says that there are thousands, 10,000 times 10,000 who stood before him. That is everyone in the world. You're standing there. That's where you're going to be. That's... Daniel, even though he's talking 2,700 years, 2,500 years, he's, he sees you and you're standing before the river of fire coming at you, the river of God's glory. 
And that fire can do one of two things, can it? You know what one of those things are. You see it. It happened in, 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 in Rocky Mountain National Park and to, and to different places around here. Fire consumes, doesn't it? It destroys. It's a picture of what punishment at the same time um, that same fire, fire can also purify, can't it? It can, it can save. You see, this river of fire is a picture of God's zeal coming out from him to either punish those who will oppose him and to purify and to save and rescue those who belong to him. When God's fire comes upon you, what's going to happen to you? Well, he tells us that as the fire comes, the court was seated and the books were opened. Books were opened. Isn't that interesting? Do you see those book, big books in the picture? Um, um, those are the books God's going to use to carry out his judgment. Isn't that interesting? You'd think God would know. He didn't need a book, but he does. He uses a book to let you and me know that, that his judgment of, of us isn't arbitrary. It isn't based on circumstantial evidence. It's based on facts, and it's written down in a book. He's got written down um, Everything. You and I have ever done. Um, imagine this, that this week um, um, I got a shipment last night um, from FedEx, and it was from God. And uh, none of the first people in the first service told you this was going to happen, but, but um, he gave me a book, and in the book it has every one of your names, and it has written down just what you did this week. The things you said, the things you did, the, the, every, every thought that went through your mind. And God said, okay, what I'd like you to do, uh, Pastor Klug, is I'd like you to have everyone uh, read somebody's name, have them stand up, and then read, this is what you did this week. How would that go over? Would it be the last time you came to church? Who would want that to happen? And that's what, but yet that's what the river of fire ought to do. It ought to consume us, destroy us. For every thought, word, and action that we have done that was in opposition to the word of our God, that disobeyed him. But you and I don't have to be afraid of that fire because of the Son of Man, because of the Messiah's kingdom. You see, he came to, not as a beast, but he came to be one of us. And he came to stand in your place. So that when the river of fire came, he was consumed by God's righteous anger over our sins and failures. That he took that punishment on the altar of the cross. So that no longer would you and I be consumed but that that fire would now purify us. And you and I know that because Jesus didn't stay dead, but he rose from the dead. To let you and me know that now you and I are rescued, we're saved. And so through faith in Jesus, through his blood, we are purified from our sins. We're rescued. And we have eternal life with him. That's what God wants you and me to know. That his judgment of us will always be not guilty when you and I stand in Christ. And we will be with him forever. You would see, that was the message that God wanted Daniel to hold on to. That in spite of the beast that he saw, Working in the world, God was still on his throne. And that on, a, on judgment day, 
when the books were opened, his name would be in the book of life. And all it would see in God's book, it would say perfect, holy, because of Jesus. And it's that message of peace and comfort that God wants you and me to know. That as you and I stand before the throne of our God, we don't have to be afraid of the fire, that it would consume us. Because through Jesus, we are perfect and holy. That's why God had it written down in another book, the Bible, so that you would know it. That's why... And God has made sure that you can know that through the water of your baptism to let you know there God's name has, your name has been written in the book of life. That in your baptism, he clothed you with the righteousness and perfection of Christ so that he sees you as his holy and perfect child. And he wants you to taste that judgment, to know with absolute certainty what it's going to be through the body and blood. That you are forgiven. And that you will be able to stand before your God, righteous and perfect. The judgment is yours. And so you can celebrate knowing that you will live with your God forever. That's his last word to you and me. That's the picture he wants us to hold on to. So what does that mean for us as we live in this world then? I suppose there's three things we could hold on to. First of all, um, the judge is coming and so you can rejoice. That that he will will make things right and that ultimately in the end, you are going to be with him forever. And you can celebrate that. And, and you and I don't have to be afraid. We can look forward to the future and that judgment day. We don't have to be afraid because we know what judgment is already going to be done. And I suppose the second question for us is, what about others? What about others that we don't know? Do, do they see the judge coming as the, a dream come true? or a nightmare, wondering what's going to happen to them? Do they see their celebration and joy only about what happens on the days here on earth, and they are scared to death of what's going to happen on Judgment Day? If that's the case, then then God says to you and me, that's why you're here. That's why you know the judgment, so that you can share what you know about Jesus and what he's done for you so that they don't have to be afraid either. That they won't be consumed by the fire of God's anger, but they will be rescued and purified by the fire of God's love and grace and mercy. The third thing Daniel wanted you and me to understand is not just about Judgment Day, but as we live now, God wanted Daniel to understand that as God sits on his throne, he was going to use the governments that he saw. To, God was going to use those governments to carry out and to, and to prepare everything for, for Jesus' kingdom to come. He made all of those things work for that, for his kingdom to come so he could rescue and to save. And just as true as that was, it's just as true for you and me. That no matter what kingdoms are in power, no matter who's a president or what, who rules in any other countries, God sits on his throne and is going to use all of those kingdoms and power to accomplish and to bring forth Jesus' kingdom when his return. To prepare us so that he can help us to be prepared by staying close to our God through faith and to help others prepare for that time so that they might know the truth about a Savior who has come to rescue him. God wants you to live with that kind of confidence as you focus on his vision 
of what the end is going to be. Judgment day. Because that's the day, really, that makes all the difference for you and me, regardless of what happens in our world, that you have a reason to rejoice and celebrate because you will be with your God forever. Rejoice. The judge is coming. Amen. Having heard the word of our God, we get a chance to share with him our offerings of thanks um, to our righteous judge. You can use the offering box out in the entryway, or you can um, give online if you'd rather do that. Um, We're going to begin, as we come to our God in prayer, to use the the words um, of the Veterans Day prayer um, as it's printed there. Please stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the selfless service of those who served our nation in the armed forces, protecting our nation, preserving our freedoms, and restoring peace in the face of brutal aggressors. We remember and honor and love today those who sacrificed their lives during their great service to our nation. Comfort those who mourn for loved ones who died while performing their duty to our country. Grant relief to those who continue to experience emotional or physical agony from their days of combat. We especially thank you, dear merciful Father, for protecting the lives of those who are here with us today. We thank them for their individual service, lovingly given so that we can freely worship you. And dear Lord, we also call upon your loving protection for all the men and women who serve our country today. Our future veterans, give them safety, give them confidence in your care, give them your eternal love, bought by the blood of Christ, precious blood of Christ. May today not be the only day that we honor and celebrate our veterans. May today be a reminder of the lifelong thanks we are to give to those who have served to keep us safe. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Um, before we join in the Lord's Prayer, we're going to um, include some special prayers, one on behalf of uh, Susie Levin, as she prepares for her ACL surgery this week. Also a prayer on behalf of Jeff Mao, who suffered a heart attack this week and is now uh, recovering at home. And then also a prayer on behalf of the Chismar and uh, Scholz family as uh, their cousin. Um, You might have heard the story on the news of a young lady who was stabbed uh, multiple times. That was their cousin and is now recovering um, in the uh, ICU. So we remember her. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise today that you are a God of grace and mercy. And so we ask that you would be with Susie as she um, prepares for her surgery this week. Give wisdom and skill to the surgical team so that they might bring healing to her. Assure her of your loving presence. Remove all fears from her heart. Um, and help her um, through this so that she might have your strength um, to enable her to recover. We place her into your gracious hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with Jeff this week, that you spared his life, and that <clears throat> through the, uh, the, the medical staff, um, you, are now, you were able to relieve um, uh, the blockage Um, from his artery, and now allow him to rest at home. We thank you for being with him, and we ask that you would give him your strength to help him in his recovery so that he might go back to to being able to serve you with the skills and abilities that you've given to him. Continue to be with him and his family through this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, um, we thank you for sparing the life of Uh, the Schulz and Chismark's cousin, um, that you uh, allowed her um, to be able to um, protect herself enough to survive. Um, What a sign of your grace and mercy. Um, We thank you for those who were able to help her and to to save her life. Uh, Continue to to be with her as she recovers. Um, Help her 
wounds to heal, not only of body, but of mind and soul. Assure her of your loving presence, uh, that she might, you might use this to bring her closer to you. Be with them and bless them during this uh, difficult and tragic time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask this confident that you hear us, because you are a living Lord and Savior. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Good morning. Glad that you could all join us for worship this morning, especially our guests worshiping with us. Privileged to share Jesus as the righteous judge with you today. Um, just a reminder of a couple of things that if you haven't um, told us about what, what your plans are for Christmas Eve, please do that. Um, uh, even if you plan on not coming, that would be helpful. Um, otherwise, the worship team will call you, and I guess if you just want the worship team to call and talk because you've got nobody else to talk to. That's fine. Um, but uh, so if you're able to do that, please do so. If you have any questions, um, please see me or ask Carol. Um, Advent by Candlelight, uh, because of some health issues and things, we've decided to, to cancel that for this upcoming year. So <clears throat> look for it next year. Um, let's see. I want to thank Carrie uh, for filling in and playing. Jeff was supposed to play this week, and uh, we kind of said, okay, have a heart attack. We'll give you the Sunday off. Um, but don't let it happen again. Um, so, so we thank her for stepping in and, and doing that. Um, as, as we celebrate a Veterans Day this Wednesday, um, we want to thank all of our veterans who have served our country. And so um, at this time, I invite... Um, if you're a veteran, please stand so we might um, acknowledge you. 